All right, uh, right in that crowd there, Michael Wiles, one of the top immigration attorneys in the country. He's taken on numerous high-profile celebrity cases, including First Lady Melania Trump. Michael helped her parents gain U.S. citizenship just back in August. There's Michael at the microphone. Mm -hmm. So Michael's out with a new book that chronicles his experience on the front lines of the immigration controversy. It's called Safe Haven in America, Battles to Open the Golden Door. Michael Wilde's joining us this morning. Pleasure, thank Michael, you. great to have you with us since we were just talking about the First Lady and, of course, her parents now U.S. citizens. Help us to understand when we talk about chain migration versus family reunification, some people, there have been critics of, you know, that she had the fast track with her parents gaining citizenship, but yet the president, her husband, is so adamantly against this. Thank you both for having me. I have to say that chain migration is a nasty word. You can see how the dialogue deteriorated in Congress. Family reunification is a hallmark of immigration policy. If you allow parents to bring their children or children to bring their parents, and not 32 people like the president espoused, uh, you will have people not only loving one another, but working harder to make America even stronger. Uh, the first lady, to her credit, uh, secured a green card legally, became an American citizen, and then petitioned for her uh, parents for citizenship in what is the golden experiment for years. And they, and I sat through the interview, went through everything else that everybody went through. They had to explain, um, show that they could write and read English and that they answered American uh, history questions, different questions to each of them, and no questions like who's the president of the United States. <laughs> everything by the book. By the book, everything, the timeline by the book. The security was a little awkward with Secret Service and Homeland Security, but again, this was all done um, on the up and up. And I've been to the immigration uh, building with Yoko Ono, with um, John George, the chef, and a lot of other celebrities through the years. But we bent over backwards. And to her credit, she knew that I was a very proud Democrat, that I stood up against the president when it came to the Muslim ban, the separating of children at the border, and so forth. And uh, that I believe, despite my representation of the Trump family and the Trump organization for so many years on immigration, that her husband was scaring the hell out of America unneedlessly. And many of the precepts and the stories in the book talk about that extraordinary experiment and how immigration done right today on this Columbus Day is everything. So let's talk about Columbus Day for a second because immigration has never been kind to Italian Americans. They would just lock them up because they were from Italy when they used to immigrate here. It's an amazing experience, uh, Rosanna. The North and the South in the late 1800s were killing each other. And there was famine and the crops weren't growing and the trees there and they were promised all kinds of benefits, but they were peasants. They got on boats where they hated each other, the Sicilians versus the others. And when they came to America, something happened, something magical and still happens to this day. The book is Battles to Open the Golden Door, Safe Haven. Well, those doors need to be hinged open because look what happened in the days of the 1800s to Jews, to the Irish, to the Italians, where they came into America and they learned that there's an equilibrium here. We're all the same. And they stayed in Little Italy and they built this nation but like it every took other them, community. But it took them a long time, Michael. I know we talk about immigration and how the system is broken now, but it's been broken for years and years and yeah. years. I'm, I'm, how has it changed since, like, your dad helped John Lennon stay in this country? Celebrated case, perhaps the most bitterly contested deportation proceeding when dad took over, and thank God he's still practicing, he took on the Nixon administration. Sadly, nothing has changed since then. And the main ingredient why things have not changed were a president now can scare people on immigration and a president then could use immigration to deport a beetle for political reasons is because people are vulnerable and scared and Congress mm. does not have the cojones to stand up and stop people from uh, and fixing a broken system. They should stand up to the president. The, the authority in immigration is a shared authority between the United States Congress and the president. And since they look weak on homeland security every two years, they have to make sure they don't touch immigration because it's a cluster. With the John F. Ken uh, John F. Uh, John Lennon, you, that was during when President Nixon. Yes. And of course, there have been parallels that are drawn uh, between our president now and and President Nixon. But we also look at Kavanaugh. Uh, confirmation. He starts tomorrow on the U.S. Supreme Court. And on the docket is immigration, once again coming before, just one of several other key issues, sort of meat and potatoes, as I heard someone else refer to. Right. Will anything change knowing now the complexion is also a little different? In the deafening silence in Washington, 
unfortunately, the courts have now ruled on matters of policy that Congress should be doing, and that's really the shame. And one of the principles of this book, this book, by the way, talks about you know uh, sexy spy cases, espionage, where the FBI was promising green cards to people, and then all of a sudden uh, the promise uh, fizzled, and they denied the green card, and they brought our office in, and so forth. Now, what's going on now is theater where the president is scaring people, Congress is climbing up, and the courts are ruling on something that is not historically within the ambit of their authority to do. So it's really up to the rank-and-file citizenry to make sure they elect effective people when it comes to immigration policy. Otherwise, by default, conservative judges and otherwise uh, will be making decisions for our nation. And just another word, if I can. There are heroes and spouses in this book that we're talking about, 9-11 uh, victims whose loved ones were lost and felled at the World Trade Center, or the gentleman who subdued Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, or Marcus, uh, Marcus Luttrell, the Navy SEAL, who was saved by Mohammed Gulab in Lone Survivor, that movie, um, by a goat herder. These are individuals where there is a need for us to reach out to heroes, to make sure that we open America's golden doors, that we understand the human asset intelligence value. If we want to hasten the end of terrorism, immigration and helping America as a safe haven is one of those tools uh, that will hasten this. Well, the book is fascinating. It's called Safe Haven in America, Battles to Open the Golden Door. Michael, great to have you here. We should also mention, of course, former mayor of Inglewood, New Jersey, and running again. Thank you. Thank right? you. Yeah, the election is in November. I need it like a hole in the head, but I love, uh, <laughs> I love the city of Inglewood. I would also urge your viewers, if they would like to come to a book warming, I have the privilege of teaching at Cardoza Law School. We're going to post it on our website. Website. You were gracious in hosting a book warming for my father's book about a year ago. That was lovely. I had and a great time. We hope to be back, and we hope that Congress and our president will get this right. I do not believe that he's a bigot. I believe that he's a showman and is trying to scare people to the polls on this. And I believe that his first lady and the example of our founding documents and founding parents are such that we can't allow that to happen. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you, we Michael. Appreciate, thank you. Uh, you know, because we are celebrating uh, Immigration Day here. Columbus Day. Well, you, you both, you're wearing the flag. <laughs> well, wearing the flag. It wasn't exactly on purpose, but it works. Yeah, but I should I sit in the middle. Yes, there know. you go. We're getting ready to eat, drink Italian style right now. We're going to celebrate with Cecilia.